I believe that I used the mask of getting straight A's to suppress the emotion I always had. And I used being a straight A student as an excuse to really express my emotions to the world. And there are three moments in my life which I resent today. And they each involve a different person and a different event that happened in my life. And still today, I have emotion and regret and resent and hatred towards those three people. And now that I'm making content again this way, like I used to years and years ago, I'm getting those emotions back. And I don't want to hold these emotions in myself. And I don't want to go on in life to have trauma held up in my body. So I'm letting it out through these videos. Just to reiterate, when I was growing up, I felt horny. I felt desire for my classmates. I felt that some girls were pretty. I felt that some girls liked me. But then I always had this mask, this security blanket of grades to keep me safe. Because the excuse I gave myself is, I can't be involved with women. I can't get involved with a girlfriend or with love and sex and all that because it'll keep me away from getting straight A's. And this was the script that I was fed as a kid, that your only priority, your only goal in life is to make good grades and you will be very happy in life. And that ended up being false. That ended up being sort of a scam where I was under a lot of debt. I was in a lot of stress because I had to pay back $250,000 of student loans and expenses and so on. And I did not know how to make money. I was clueless. I was going to end up as a dead end professor job, making some bullshit money. And this is the script that they fed me all throughout my life. That if you're a good kid and you live according to what your parents say and what your religion says and what your community says and what all the books say, then you will be happy, you'll get a hot girlfriend, you'll, you'll have a nice family, you'll be very attractive, you'll be good looking, you'll make a lot of money, and you'll be happy in life, but that's not the case. And one misunderstanding that I wanna to clarify today before I get into these three women that I resent in my life. I resent a lot of men too, but this video is about those three women that I feel really great resentment and anger towards. I just want to clarify that game and approaching women and RSD and those from 2008 or 2009 until basically 2017, 2018, maybe like eight to 10 years when I was fully, fully into pickup and I went to every country to pick up girls and to, to attract beautiful women towards me. That's why I visited every country that I ever visited. That was the number one quality that I looked for in a country. It was bullshit. I was telling people that, oh, it's because of uh, walkability or living expenses or uh, 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 health or uh, uh, culture or history. It was all bullshit. It was just for women. And now that I am about to embark on a life with one, one woman, for the rest of my life, because I'm getting married next week, I wanted to set the record straight to everyone and not have any misunderstanding. I love game, I love RSD. Doing pickup, approaching all those women, getting myself out of the comfort zone helped me so much in life. It got me to who I am today. 
as I'm speaking to you here, the confidence that I have, I got through that, you know, those four or five years of rigorous, rigorous pickup. Day game, night game, all of that stuff. So this is very, very worth it. Of course, there's a dark side. Of course, there's horrible things that can happen. And a lot of that I talked about in my previous video. And ju just to clarify one thing, the main reason I left that world is because it was giving me the wrong attitude towards success. What I was fed is that I don't need to be wealthy to get what I want in life. I don't need to be good looking to get what I want in life. I don't need to be healthy to get what I want in life. This was the vibe, this was the energy that I was portrayed, but then I figured out this is all bullshit. You have to work out, you have to be healthy, you have to eat healthy, you have to boost your testosterone levels, which I spent the last 10 years doing. And you have to be with your emotion, you have to not suppress your emotion, you have to be in touch with your feminine side. All of that is taught in game two, but the energy, the interpretation that I got from that from those people was not that. It was a little bit of that, but it was not all that. And anyway, I learned through other mentors that I've had since then and I'm very great, grateful. So let's get into the, the crux of the video. The, why, am I, why am I even telling you about these three women that I resent? And, and why is this so important to me? In the previous video, I got multiple comments of guys saying that I am naive or I am, uh, maybe uh, uh, too stupid to realize that there is such a thing as feminism and social justice warriors who are out to get men. And we know about the Me Too movement, we know about how uh, divorces, you know, all the settlement goes to the wife most of the time. But I don't have first-hand experience with this, thank God. Maybe because I kept myself sheltered from all of this, through studies and through grades. And over the last five years, in fact, 10 years in entrepreneurship, and over the last five years rigorously working on a supplement company, Afro-D, where I've spent all of my time and energy just trying to scale this company and bring this supplement to the whole world, to all the men out there. So I have been out of touch with firsthand experience with these events. I've never been me too'd. I've never had a you know, divorce where the girl took all the money. So I would like you guys to tell me your specific experience where you got betrayed, you got fucked over, you, you were, there was a traitor in your life which really, really hurt you. Let me know that because I thankfully, or maybe I, I should have put myself out there more to get rejected more. And, and I, you know, I look back at all those moments where I could have approached girls that I didn't. And we all have these moments in our life. And I regret those moments. Like shit, I, I could have gotten out of my comfort zone here. I could have learned something about myself here. I could have done self-development here, but I didn't do it. And because I was, had a massive fear of rejection. I had a massive fear of what would happen inside me if I got rejected, how would I feel? I didn't want to get uncomfortable. So let's get into these stories and, and, and stop the rant. The first story is about a girl that I met. I talked about this in the previous video, but I just touched on it. I was basically, I wouldn't say fully in love with her, but I really wanted her to be my girlfriend. She was one of those girls that I really wanted her to be my girlfriend. I looked, liked her body, I liked her face, um, I liked her you know, her culture, her uh, innocence, her, her femininity. I liked all of that. This was in grad school. And she's the reason I got into game. She's the reason I got into pickup. And this, the, the way the story goes is that I was so in love with this girl, and I can say it, you know, I was in love with this girl in a way where I was, I never insulted her. I never called her a slut or any of that. I was very nice to her and I was very gentleman to her. I was, I spent, I tried to spend as much time as I could with her. I knew nothing about game at the time, literally nothing. I had not read Mystery or Owen or David D'Angelo or Ross Jeffries, none of them. 
And I uh, was such a nice guy with this girl. I was always smiling. I was always being where she is. And even when I went to East Africa to do this uh, entire history tour and I came back, I asked her to be my dance partner because I knew she wouldn't say no. She had an excuse, right? Because she was doing it for the religion, for the culture. And uh, so, yeah, I had her dance with me. And, and let me tell you about the moment that literally changed my life that got me into game. I still remember I, she was in chemistry class. She was really tired. She still had, she had a, a big exam. I picked her up and I told her it's a surprise. I'm not going to tell her where I'm taking her. And as I'm, and remember, I've never kissed this girl before. I've never even like held her hand. I haven't like done anything sexual with her. I haven't been uh, any like playboy, uh, tough, macho, none of that. Just the complete bullshit, nice guy pussy, right? I walk with her from her chemistry class and right now I'm very safe, right? Like I'm a safe guy. So she trusts me like I'm, I'm already in the friend zone, but I did not know. I walk with her all the way to the McGill uh, 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 Best Western building, right? Where I'd, I had already set up a fucking throne in, in the lobby for her, right? I had gone in advance, I had set up this chair and I had arranged the lobby in such a way where I would express my love towards her. I brought her, uh, I, I picked her up from chemistry class. We were walking on Sherbrooke Street, you know, through the McGill campus, because we both went to McGill. I was a grad student, she was a freshman or sophomore at the time, I don't remember, probably a freshman. And uh, I, I, I brought her all the way to the Best Western and she was like, what the fuck is going on? She had no idea, but she, I'm like, trust me, trust me. I bring her in and I sit her on this throne that I had made, literally a throne. And I sit in a normal chair in front of her. And at this point, she's like smiling and nervous and she doesn't know what's gonna happen. Or maybe she was just being innocent and she knew what the hell was gonna happen. She was pretending to be innocent, I don't know. But I told her I liked her, right? I told her, I like you. And, uh, and, I, and I stared at her and I got nothing back, like no expression back. And then eventually, uh, she became kind of nervous and I said, look, you don't have to tell me anything right now. You can take your time. There is no hurry. And the day before, okay, now, <laughs> let me tell you why I did this in such an emergency. The day before, I was going in a car to, to our, our Jamaat Khana, which is like a prayer hall, with two guys who were sitting, uh, 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 like, I was sitting on the left side and they were sitting here in the car and they were talking about her this girl and they were saying when the middle guy who by the way ended up marrying her <laughs> when the middle guy is going to express that he likes her and and he was he was a playboy you know all the girls liked him he was very popular he was a hockey player he was buff i was skinny and uh you know he had muscles and stuff and and this other guy who was like sort of his right hand man lackey type like a yes man told him hey um uh, uh, what are you gonna do? You know, she she likes you, blah blah blah. And he was like, ah, I don't care, I don't care. He was just being very nonchalant. And I heard this story in the car, so I had to tell her right away as an emergency. So I had set up this whole BS thing. So I sit her down and I tell her. And uh, and then I said, you know what? Let me walk you to the street, and then I'm just gonna go home because I'm, you know, I wanted to give her time to think. She gets to the other side of the street. Okay, and I just thought I was so honest and so straightforward and such a nice guy that I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I run to her and I'm like, I have to tell you one more thing before you go. And you know what I told her? I told her that this other guy that was in the middle likes her. Because he, that's what he said in the car. And I was so honest. I wanted to be fully, fully straightforward and frank with her and I told her. And you know what she, she did? Oh. And it fucking killed me. It fucking killed me, man. That awe killed me. And, uh, and then they started dating, probably because of me. 
And then they married, and I don't know if they're still married, but I remember when I was in LA, many, many years ago, I had the, I had the big dog testosterone beard. Uh, I met her in Jamaat Khana, and uh, she introduced me to a few of her friends and said, oh, look at my, this is my friend. And I think, uh, I don't know if she already had a kid. I think she already had a kid. I think I saw the kid. And uh, I felt really happy, you know? I felt really happy, but I still had resent. And now that I'm telling you, the resent is going away. The, the hatred and the anger is going completely away because she taught me how important it was to learn all this stuff to learn how to approach and become out of your comfort zone and be able to talk to anyone without fear. The second time I felt resent, it was very recent. Mike, our coach Mike from Afro D, he had just come from Washington to visit us. I was at the airport with Marta, Andre and Jameson and I was very, very excited to meet Mike. So I was very close to the door and I had my camera ready, my, my DSLR camera. And I wanted to catch the glimpse of Mike as he comes out of the airport. I was so excited to meet Mike. But there was a cunt security guard there, a girl, a lady, who kept looking at me. She didn't say anything. She kept looking at me. And these types of people are literally dogs to me. Like they, they're bitches to me. They're like totalitarian dictators, like Hitler to me. So I ignored her like she's a barking dog, just staring at me, about to bark. But I didn't move, I was there. Because even though I had so much love for Mike, I also had hatred towards fuckers like that. So I'm, I'm looking and, I'm, and I'm, I'm full of love. I want to catch Mike just because I did, did the same thing when Andre came. So I wanted to catch it with Mike too. And uh, in five minutes later, she starts talking. She starts walking towards me. Martha is right next to me. She also has a cell phone, but I have the, the DSLR. And she says some full fucked up shit in Spanish, which I pretended to not know. But I knew what she was saying. She was saying, move away. I was not blocking the door. People were getting by just fine. I was not blocking the door. It was, I, there's no rule that I cannot stand there. And she said some bullshit. I'm like, hey, I, I don't speak Spanish. I only speak English, sorry. I didn't explain to her. I was not nice to her and I should have been. I should have smiled and I should have made her my friend in an authentic, genuine way, but I didn't. I fucking hated her. So I ignored her like she's a dog. I backed up like one step and I kept the camera there. She went back, she came again, and now she's more aggressive, telling me to back up. And I fucking hate that because I believe, and you guys comment and tell me your life experience, I believe that there are people in the world who cannot see you happy. Like, as I'm making this video right now, there's gonna be guys who are gonna say shit like, why are you bald now? Uh, what happened? Did uh, the supplement make you bald? Uh, did uh, having too high testosterone make you bald? Uh, you don't look uh, good anymore, doc. You look skinny. You used to have a beard and you used to look like a man. Now you look like a punk. You look like a pussy. There, I believe there are sadists out there, trolls, who literally get happiness from seeing me angry or seeing me sad or seeing me frustrated. They literally get happy from seeing other people angry and react and triggered, right? And I think this lady was the same way. She could not see me happy because when she went to visit her, par her, her parents or, or maybe her parents are dead, but her children or her, her, I don't know, her brother, sister, they weren't that happy. Maybe she doesn't have any love in her life. So she fucking hates her life. So she wanted me to hate my life too because she could not see me happy. So you know what she did? She went to get a security guard and the fucking police, the, the fucking National Guard of Mexico, whatever the fuck, came to me and told me to move. And then I moved. And I, now that I'm telling you, I let it go. I don't hate her anymore. It's all right. She has such 
horrible, she has such a horrible life that all she can do is make other people's life miserable. But I haven't encountered too many people like that. So if you have, please tell me because I want to learn. Now the third time. This, this you guys will like because it's about pickup. When I was in Vancouver, before I came to Tulum, I was at a bar with my buddy Mo and our another buddy Josh. And we were just, you know, having fun, having a drink in one of the bars there. And there was a beautiful, big titty girl over there in the corner, really fit looking, you know, very, very voluptuous. And they could just talk, talk about her. They, they, they could do nothing but talk about her. And I didn't think she was like all that, maybe like a, maybe a seven, something like that. Not all that pretty, right? Because I'm all about the face, man. I'm, I'm all about the face. I mean, the body's great. It's an icing on the cake, but it's all about the face for me. And it wasn't that good for me specifically. You know, everyone has their taste. But they weren't approaching this girl. They were pussied out. They weren't approaching this girl. And I went, you know, I went to talk to her. And uh, I talked to her, she, you know, uh, she, was, she was actually going to the bathroom. So when she was coming back, uh, no, uh, 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 she went to the bathroom. And when she was coming back, I got up to go to the bathroom so I could talk to her. And I talked to her and she said she's a lesbian. So I'm like, hey, it's all good. Uh, we don't, uh, you know, it, this doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. I can be your friend. Uh, I just wanted to say hello and that's it. And that was genuine. I wasn't even interested in her. I just wanted to say hello and get out of my comfort zone and do self-development. And she went to tell the waitress. And this waitress was so nice to us before. She was so friendly, so happy. In fact, the bartender of that bar, I know her from acting school. When I was going to acting school during COVID, she was one of my classmates. And she was at that, she was a bartender there. But not her, but another girl who was our waitress, she comes up to us on the table and says, I'm gonna have to ask you guys to leave. I'm like, what happened? She's like, you made that girl feel uncomfortable and we don't allow that at this bar. I'm gonna have to ask you guys to leave. And I said, can you tell me exactly what happened? She's like, I went to the girl, she called me and she was very nervous and she would, her heartbeat was so thumping hard and uh, you made her feel a certain way and now I'm sorry, you just have to leave. I, I can't have you in here. And I told my two friends we're gonna leave because I don't want to be in a bar like that. So we got up, but before we got up, I went to that table and I told the girl, I looked at her in the eyes and the girl who was sitting right next to her and I said, listen, I did not mean to offend you or talk to you in any way to make you uncomfortable. I simply wanted to express myself and become your friend because I saw that you might be interesting. And that's all. But because you're uncomfortable with us, we're gonna leave. Now I said that to give her a chance, maybe she'll be okay with it, but she's like, said nothing, just looked at me, just stared at me. And that waitress followed me to the table and she was right next to me. Like, get the fuck out of here, idiot. And we left. 